Hey, that's me. Hi guys, so I recently watched the new Netflix series Disenchantment. This show is a new animated series by the very popular and well-established Matt Groening. Now, if you don't already know Groening's work, see The Simpsons or Futurama, please. The series centers around a 19-year-old princess named Tia Bini, or Bean for short, and follows her adventures through young adulthood in the fantasy kingdom of Dreamland. Problems arise for the princess as she struggles for independence from her overbearing father and her stifling princess responsibilities. All the while, she is struggling to manage puberty through teenage rebellion and her very own personal demons. The show sounds like a recipe for success, right? But shortly after its debut, Disenchantment saw some very mixed reviews. Let's take a closer look into the show's strengths and weaknesses. Visually, the show is very similar to The Simpsons art style, but placed in a fantasy setting. For fellow fantasy and D&D geeks like me, though, it was a fun alternative to playing Witcher for the third time this week just to escape to a chainmail-laden world of fantasy creatures and loop music. Now, in terms of characters, I found them amazingly relatable in this show. It's still pretty rare to find a gray area female protagonist, so that was pretty refreshing to see. But aside from Princess Bean, she had her companion Lucy, the personal demon, and Elfo. Lucy's character was pretty straightforward, pressuring Bean into giving in to her darkest inclinations and thus departing from the traditional princess and ladylike behavior. And bonus points, he was voiced by Eric Andre. That's pretty cool. Now what I liked about Elfo was that he represented a greater pattern for women growing up in this world. That Elfo was constantly trying to get with Bean, fawning over her from the sidelines, trying to impress her with extravagant lies. Elfo essentially represents the nice guy best friend that attempts to get the girl by utilizing his friend status. Now I'm not saying Elfo's bad guy, but rather that this is an extremely realistic representation of what women growing up and finding themselves have to go through in terms of relationships. Dare there be female writers on this show? Bingo! We have three female writers behind this series. One that's previously written on one of my personal favorite animated series, Gravity Falls, and the other two writing on Superstore. According to Matt Groening, the voice actor behind Princess Bean, Abby Jacobson, also had a say in tweaking some of the characters' lines so that they were a little bit more realistic to the rebellious female teen's character. Now, let's move on to talk a little bit more about the show's structure. This is where the season fell a little short for me. So the series utilizes book terminology, such as part one, part two, chapter one, chapter two, and the first season was, you guessed it, part one. So it was set up like a book, which would make sense that the first season is simply just exposition, but it felt a little unsatisfying from a viewer perspective to have a bunch of mini stories and villains only to have them beaten within an episode or two and the main villain to suddenly spawn in the last episode. This reminds me of the latest season of Rick and Morty and how its season three suddenly started pushing a very heavy handed narrative within what was previously a fairly episodic show. Shortly after its release, Disenchantment has received its fair share of criticism. A lot of people are complaining about the humor of the show saying it's simply not funny, and comparing it to Groening's other works such as The Simpsons and Futurama. My response to that is simply that Disenchantment is neither of those shows. It's its own separate entity, and Matt Groening is clearly trying to do something different with it. I personally thought the humor was witty, silly, and situational. Was I falling out of my chair gripping my stomach because it hurts so much to keep laughing? No, but I'm also not really that kind of viewer. If you want The Simpsons or Futurama, just go watch reruns of those shows. Easy peasy. Other criticisms against the show are about, you guessed it, the show's claim to be feminist. Honestly, I thought the show captured another viewpoint of femininity that other media rarely captures. It takes the traditional princess story and flips it on its head. It's like The Princess Bride, but if we cut out Wesley and Princess Buttercup was an actual actor in her own life. Don't get me wrong, I freaking love Princess Bride, but there were a few clear parallels to it within this series. As we touched on earlier, my main criticism of the show was the overall structure of the season, or part one. From the first episode, I thought the show would be about Princess Bean having to deal with 
troubles of being betrothed or being forced into princess queen duties. But then the first prince dies. Then the next couple of episodes were pretty similar, with the following suitor getting turned into a pig. It left me unsure on what the plot was actually about. There were a few more episodes dabbling with drugs, theft, and parties, all leaving me confused about what the season was actually getting at. Not until episode 7 does the show actually get any conflict that doesn't either solve itself or get treated with lighthearted solutions and irreverence. Hopefully the writing will get a little more cohesive moving forward into part 2 or season 2. Basically, to sum everything up, I liked the show, but it was lacking structure. So there you have it, my review of Netflix's new series, Disenchantment Part 1. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button below. And I want to hear from you guys. Did you agree with anything I said, disagree, or just simply have a different opinion? Feel free to put those in the comments. I'd love to read them. Thank you guys for joining me, and I will see you next time.